Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media. With me today is a very special guest. He is uh, one of the renowned chief strategy officers who has really transformed the business for PhD. Please meet Mr. Mark Holden, chief strategy officer, nice PhD. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Mr. Holden, my first question to you is: um, Tell us about uh, you know you coming back to Cannes after two years. Yeah, well, it's been, it's been a long time, um, but actually, it's been great to come back and connect with people again and, and see how things are changing. Um, some of the themes this year that I think is important to highlight are important to highlight. Um, effectiveness seems to be higher up the agenda. There was obviously there's a creative effectiveness is the new award that's uh, that's been introduced to the festival this year. But also there was a huge amount of um, focus on effectiveness in marketing. I mean, walk carried out a program of, of, of presentations. They looked at attention and they looked at some of the IPA research. So I think it's really good to start to bring that in. Um, and other themes that I think might be worth highlighting, I mean, the, the, there's always been a lot of focus on brand activism, um, and you, you see, sometimes it's quite easy to create um, ideas or, um, with charities, NGOs, and brands that want to do, do good in the space, but they felt like there was more of that this year. So brands really trying to have an impact, which is really, really good. Um, and, uh, and of course, technology, some really interesting use of technology that I've seen from brands about using technology as a creative canvas and start to produce innovation from it and not just use it for targeting and other things. So uh, there's a lot of talk around metaverse this time. So how do you think Indian market can, you know, learn from it, and uh, you know, what kind of takeaways can you give for Indian market? Sure. Well, certainly for the um, the urban populations that are uh, dig digital natives, um, for those um, for those groups, those audiences in India, they um, they should start to, and, for, and as we're marketing towards them, we should start thinking about how we can start to use some of these new technologies. Um, there's a lot of hype around the metaverse. Um, and around Web3, but there will be some usefulness that emerges from it. So, for example, using NFTs as a, a gateway to, to access uh, certain communities and groups, um, and also um, thinking about how we can build what are called um, DAOs, uh, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. These are groups of individuals that, that gather around Indian businesses and can start to shape the direction and policy, if you like, of how these businesses are run. So what it means for Indian businesses and Indian market is, is to think about how they can start to blur the walls of their own organizations with their communities or with their fans and allow them to start to take more of an ownership over the direction of the company. And I think that's really the huge value that's going to emerge from Web3 for India. Also, you know, this is uh, after two years after the pandemic. This is the first uh, can on ground. So, uh, do you see any kind of effect on the entries on uh, the sessions that you know pand how pandemic has changed it? Yeah, I think. I mean, the only way I'd answer that is I just think there is um, a real people are very energized by being back together again, and I think you're seeing that from you know not just India but from across the world, from across across APAC, people coming together again, and I think that's really so important in, it, in a creative industry is to sort of you know bump, you know bounce up against other people and that's where um, ideas come from so I think really that's just that, that that difference that the last two or three years have made to the festival no but when you see the entries when I'm talking in specific to the work mm. work that was done during the pandemic that has come uh, this year yeah. or uh, even the sessions you know when people are talking about things do you uh, see that things have changed yeah, there is a, there is a slight shift towards a more lightness in tone. I think people are looking for um, you know a bit more uh, um, uh, more fun, I guess, um, and, and to, to lift people's minds and hearts a little bit more. So I think that's that's emerging. I think out of the work. Um, I think in, in the pandemic we had a lot of brands that took it very seriously and tried to engage and understand where people were. Um, feeling anxious and concerned, but I think there is that slight shift now, um, which is really nice to see. Do you also see a shift towards purpose and sustainability, you know, that these are two things that I've been hearing in most of the sessions. Do you agree with it? Yeah, of course. There is, uh, you know, we believe purpose is really a powerful tool to galvanize the workforce of any uh, organization and to give them, give them meaning. People need meaning in their, in their, in their jobs. They can't just come to come to work every day and just do tactical things. So purpose is really important. The question really always is to what extent should you communicate your purpose through advertising? And in some cases you should, in some cases you perhaps you shouldn't. And if you are communicating your purpose, to what extent, how, did, how does that affect 
the organization? How does it grow the organization? It might well be that purpose-based communication builds the right associations that you know are important to build mental availability for your brand. And therefore, purpose is a really good strategy. Uh, I would also want to understand from you that, you know, uh, in last few years, uh, everything is about programmatic and data and technology. How how challenging is it to, you know, ha- have uh, your whatever you are selling to the to the client to make it different from what other agencies are doing? Of course. Well, I think, I mean, all of these um, elements are um, components that effectively make up the tapestry, the canvas, the, the vast canvas that we can use in, in marketing. And it's a question of how you combine them together. Think of it as a restaurant. You know, there are ingredients, aren't they? And the quality of the chef is based on the, the degree to which you can combine those ingredients together to create something remarkable. So it's not that you have to have a technology that no one else has, but it's how you can bring them together. I mean, Omnicom, typically what we've always done is we focus not on buying data and owning data. We was, we spent a lot of time um, building data licensing partnerships with a range of partners so we can remain on the client side of the table and we can combine data sources together in a way that's right for the client as opposed to selling data that we've already purchased. So that's, that's, that, that's one part of it, but really it's about how we combine tech data together and build algorithms around it to create something remarkable. That's important. Uh, India is doing phenomenally well this year. Uh, there are a lot of entries from India that are being talked about. We've already got three Grand Prix. Uh, have you been able to see any of them? I have. And I have um, seen some great work. I mean, um, the uh, well, actually, the BBDO in our group uh, uh, have done with PNG with uh, with Ariel, where yeah. of course the names of the, uh, yeah. the packing have changed with the names of men, of men. Just thought it was really really nice. I mean, obviously, that the idea of changing names on pack isn't a new idea but it's been used in a very creative way, a very powerful way. I thought that's fantastic piece of work. Mark, thank you so much for talking to us. Pleasure. Thanks for your time. Thanks.